I'm Lynette Zhang, Chief Market Analyst here at ITM Trading, a full-service physical gold and silver dealer. But what we really specialize in is planning and strategies for our clients. That's really, you know, we're here to be of service. And so uh, we are doing client questions from consultants today, and I'm just going to dive right in. And the first one is from Martin. And it's Jalila. Do we need to worry about a confiscation of junk silver under the guise of a physical currency recall? My precious metals dealer has told me to go for pure fractional silver as much as possible, which is difficult to find. But in a barter situation, I see the benefit of my of junk silver. My only resistance is having it confiscated, not due to its intrinsic value, but under the banner of it being contaminated coinage that needs to be removed for the health of the population. Well, you know, look, it is much easier for governments and central banks if we just volunteer because then we don't realize that it was really their choice. They did indeed confiscate silver in 1933. But the difference between gold and silver is that gold is indestructible and recoverable. So we can account for about 98% of all of the gold that has ever been mined, regardless of its form. But we cannot do that with silver. It gets used up in the manufacturing. So therefore, personally, I am not particularly concerned about a silver confiscation. It could happen. Anything could happen. And as in everything, you know, it's important to have a level of diversification. So let's see, do we need under the guise of a physical currency recall my precious metal metals dealer, which I would hope it would be us, but this does not sound like something we would say, has told me to go for, oh, okay, pure fractional silver as much as possible, which is difficult to find. The way that you can do that, there's the ones that is like 99.9% pure is, are rounds, silver rounds. And you could certainly go that route. And I personally have some silver rounds. I also, though, really like the pre-1964 dimes, quarters, half dollars, and even the dollars. And those are 90% pure silver. So the other way because I happen to have this, so I'll just pull it over. So I don't read the questions beforehand, typically. But the other way, you guys have seen me with my little stash of, you know, sterling silver flatware, and oh, here's a, here, this is an iced teaspoon, you know, and this is a little cute, little ladle. But, and my, of course, my chopsticks, and, and even this old brush, right? Brush. Because silver in any form, and, tr- and gold as well, is monetary at its base regardless of its condition. So this is another way to accumulate and use silver. And if I needed a part of this, I mean, I could weigh this out. I'm not really sure. But sterling silver is 92.5% pure. And so if I needed to, I would have no problem cutting this into pieces to use. So there are all different ways. Here, cute little, these don't even weigh very much, but cute little sterling silver salt and pepper shakers, right? It must be marked sterling or 925, which is Mexican silver. Um, The junk silver is great. The rounds are great. And, you know, Silver Eagles. And by the way, since you're bringing this up, and I don't know if this is in here, but I did double check because you might recall that we talked about the pricing of Silver American Eagles on the Mint's website as compared to the cost to the dealer. It's really interesting. So I went on and just looked at it yesterday out of curiosity. And I believe that uh, brand new, no big deal, Silver American Eagle on the Mint's website is going for like 74 bucks. Now, while I'm not really sure what it's going for at ITM, with spot where it is, you know, I would say that it's probably going for 30 something dollars, probably half or something. So I think that's really interesting as well. 
They did that a while ago where they just, boy, yanked up prices on silver for a lot of their products. I think that could be telling us something. I think that could be telling us about a silver shortage. But I don't know for sure. So what you really want to do is just accumulate it in any way, shape, or form. It can even be, it can even be jewelry. This happens to be Mexican silver jewelry. So you probably have some rings, different things in your jewelry box. It's monetary at its base. That old high school class ring that's 10 karat gold. Well, it's got some gold in it. It's monetary at its base. That's another way to accumulate gold. And so actually, when my girls were 12, that's when I started buying them, you know, jewelry. And I, the reason why I did that is because even when they went away to college, wherever they went, I always wanted them to have some money if they really got into an emergency circumstance. So, I mean, there are all, that's a very expensive way to do it. Yard sales are a very cheap way to do it. You know, the dealers like ITM trading, well, that's at the current market. So there are lots of different ways to do it. And, you know, don't take anybody's word. Everybody, There are ways to test the purity level of any of this stuff. So don't worry about that. Just accumulate. And uh, from uh, Sari, TR asks, Let's see. The Chapwood Index has 50 U.S. cities, and for each city, it had the real inflation rate over five years than a five-year average. When I checked it two weeks ago, it had it had the first half of 2020 inflation rates that were, in some cases and cities, close to 13%. Then, poof, it's gone. Lynette, do you know about it and about shadow stats? Well, I do know about it. I did not know that poof, it was gone. So I'll double check that. But that is a much more, and shadow stats, oh yes, he, he's brilliant. And he's been tracking the uh, real inflation rate since the 80s. So in both of these cases, those are much, much more accurate indexes and much truer read of real inflation right now than what you're seeing from the government that picks and chooses what's going to go into their inflation index so they can justify pushing higher inflation. I remember now they've changed their policy, so they're going to do an average. That means that when it runs hot, higher than their 2%, they're just going to let it rock and roll and tell everybody, well, look, we, we told you we were going to do this because we need a 2% average. No, these are much more accurate to what the true inflation numbers are. And I think we're just in the beginning stages moving into the hyperinflation. Um, so I'll look and see why it would suddenly be poof gone. But the reality is, is who, who are the ones that are out there that are determining what can be and cannot be on their platforms? I don't know. Big, big tech? I almost said pig tech. That could, be, that could have been an accurate statement. But big tech is deciding what gets shown and what gets seen and what gets heard these days. Not really uh, free speech. And here's another one from Sari. And Jane asks, how is intrinsic value determined in a coin or in another asset class like a Rolex. Well, there's two different things that you're asking in here. You know, it, and when you're talking about intrinsic value, I kind of convert that to fundamental value. What, and I think everybody needs to understand what the fundamental, the true fundamental value of any asset, <coughs> excuse me, or instrument is. Because frankly, Jane, that is the only way for you to know if something is undervalued, fairly valued, or overvalued. Therefore, do I want to buy it? Do I want to hold it? Do I want to liquidate it? And the way that you get that, I mean, there's some level of nuance in here, but you have to determine 
what is the most important function of that asset or instrument, not what you want it to do, but what the creators wanted it to perform, what's the most important function, and then how has history valued that function? And then that can get you to what its true value is. For things like gold and silver, which are monetary metals, and including the Rolex that could be a gold or silver Rolex, and and I'll come back to the Rolex in a second, but the most important function of gold is, you know, I mean, what is money? Money is a tool to value labor and store it for future use. Yes, we barter with it. We've been taught that the only thing that money is about is for barterability, and that's really not true. It's a means to value your labor, and then any labor that you do not use today, you want to hold for future use, it maintains its value so that no matter when you use it, you're always being fairly paid for your labor. But for governments, that's a problem because if they tax you, it's now visible. So they want you to just, again, volunteer your labor, your wealth, your work. And so they created fiat money, which is government money, which by design has inflation baked into it. So today, you know, your labor is valued at X, but if you try and hold any of that money, you absolutely 100% know it's not holding its value. And so what do you do? You buy, you know, Wall Street stock markets, bond markets, real estate markets, etc. In any attempt to hold its value, even though in your mind, perception management is that it's growing. But actually what it's doing, it's inflating. The currency is losing purchasing power value. And so these things are going up in terms of that currency. All right, I kind of digressed from that. But since the true, the most important function of gold is to hold its value over time, and the most important function of fiat money is to lose its value over time, basically invisibly, and in this current circumstance, in this current um, monetary regime, money is created from debt, then just really simple. This is really, really simple. You take all the debt that's been created as a proxy for money, because that's how the money is created, and you divide it by all the gold that exists in the entire world, in ground, above ground, doesn't matter because gold is indestructible. It's one of the key reasons why it is the primary currency metal. And then that gets you to somewhere near its true intrinsic or fundamental value. Beyond that, which is somewhere, I have, I have frankly, I haven't really run those numbers in a while. So, you know, some say 12,000. Last time I did it just in this country, or no, globally, globally, it was like something like over 12,000. Some say 50,000 if you did it just in this country, frankly, with all the debt that we're growing, those numbers get higher, right? So the more debt that they grow, because that's an infinite amount, right? Then that number goes higher, that nominal number. But gold and silver are simply performing the most important function when you see the prices rise. That's, That's why they have to suppress it. But that's how you get that fundamental value. Now, when you take something like a Rolex or a collectible, right? Because this little sterling silver ladle is frankly in very nice condition. And I really wouldn't personally want to, you know, cut it up, even though that I could, but I would not want to do it. It has more value as a collectible like the Rolex. It has more value as a collectible than it does for its content, right? So for something like a Rolex, they're, again, like like gold, like silver, like anything that's physical, there is a finite amount of it, period, end of discussion. And so when we have a a true supply-demand 
market, then that's going to push the price in addition to whatever metal content or diamonds or whatever other content that it has. That's what's going to push that price higher. So in that case, what you're going to be looking for, uh, and I'd rather go to like the dynastic wealth stool, right? That's wealth that's lasted in families at least 300 years, and it has three legs. It has uh, real, real estate, rare collectibles, I mean really rare collectibles, not Franklin Mint collectibles, but truly rare collectibles like your Rolex, and gold. Those are the three legs of that dynastic wealth stool. And let's just talk about the rare collectible leg. You want something that there is a finite amount because wealth never disappears. It merely shifts location, right? And people that have wealth, well, they want things that only they can have, like a Rolex or, you know, or a cute little sterling silver ladle. And so they're willing to pay that premium or the collectible numismatic coins. So if you think of it like an auction, you have 10 things and there are 10 people at this auction and where, and everybody wants one. That's what they want. They just want one. So wherever that auction opens, well, that's what everybody's going to pay and they're going to walk away happy. But if there's one and there's 10 people there and all 10 people want that, well, he or she who is willing to pay the most gets it. But then you still have nine people that wanted it and didn't get it. So when the opportunity presents, presuming they are in a position, then that, there's where your bidding wars are. You know, a true supply and demand market that is not manipulated by central banks or governments. And that's where we're headed in the gold and silver market. And it isn't because I say so. And it isn't that these things are going up because of, you know, because I say so. You have to keep in mind that the way that the government and the central bankers ultimately perform the full reset is against gold, which is all intrinsic value. And the fact that we're not seeing spot at 20 bucks an ounce, like it was in 1913 when they first took over, and it's like 1844, that's not gold going up. That's the dollar going down and the loss of purchasing power value. It's down 98% since the Fed was invented and legalized. So what can I tell you? So that is, we're, we're done for today, but if you are not getting your bell notifications when we go live, you know, please let us know too. You can, you can talk to one of your consultants or you can go ahead, but let us know because we are working on that problem and I don't know if it's still a problem, but if you're not getting notified, please hit that bell. And if you're not a subscriber, subscribe. If you like this, give us a thumbs up. And make sure that you share all of these videos. Uh, now, this week, I was on the BABY Investment Research Channel with Antonio. And the video link is now on his channel. And we've got it linked in the description below. Uh, also, I had a fantastic interview with Egon Von Greers. And, you know, I, I mean, he's such a brilliant man. So you definitely want to see that video if you have not done so. Now, next week, I'll be on with I Love Prosperity and Jake Ducey. And uh, that looks to be our first million viewed video. So I'm really happy about that and excited to see what happens this time. Stay tuned for our socials. You'll know when that's going out. And keep in mind, without any doubt whatsoever, please, people, there's insanity in these markets. It is time to cover your assets. And here at ITM Trading, we do it with the Wealth Shield, which is made up of physical gold and silver. But there's more to it than that, too, because we all need food, water, energy, security, barterability, wealth preservation, community, and shelter to have a reasonable standard of living. So please get it done. Look at where you're most vulnerable 
and start to, if you haven't already, start to plug those holes. And if you haven't finished, get finished. Where are you most vulnerable? Do you have enough gold and silver to protect your wealth and to survive when nobody really wants that currency anymore because all the confidence is lost? So until next time, please be safe out there. Bye-bye.